Hello, everyone. Welcome to our fourth webinar for Electrify Week on induction cooking, clean, efficient, high performance. I'm Joe Wachunas. I'm here as always with my teammate, uh, Brian Stewart, and we'll be introducing our chef, Rochelle, in just one second. Thanks for joining us. Uh, as always, uh, we'd like to let you know that we are Electrify Now, an all volunteer group that boils down our message into four key points. Um, one, clean up your electric supply by buying solar panels or buying clean energy from your local utility. Two, electrify your home. And today we're gonna to be talking about a big component of that, the electrify your cooking. Uh, three, electrify your transportation, your car or your bike. And four, electrify everyone. Now, Electrify Everyone is a program that we are working on in partnership with uh, the Community Energy Project. Thank you to all of you who have donated so far. We are removing old uh, gas uh, water heaters and installing new uh, efficient electric heat pump water heaters in income qualified households. We've done over 50 in the first year of this program. And, uh, and together through our webinars alone, we've raised over $4,000. So thank you to everyone who's donated and please continue to donate. Um, so this is day four of Electrify Week. Uh, thanks so much for everyone who's joined us. On Monday, we talked about uh, all electric versus gas, and that is in, on our YouTube channel. Just Google Electrify Now YouTube. Uh, that was about new construction and how it's uh, mostly cheaper to build all electric and new construction. On Tuesday, we talked about heat pump water heaters and Wednesday, grid interactive buildings. Today we're talking about induction cooking and tomorrow we'll be talking about healthy homes where uh, equity and electrification uh, intersect. And we wanna say thank you to the over 1500 registrants we've had from 28 different countries that are part, taking part in Electrify Week. Thank you so much to all, uh, it's great to be with you. A, a quick shout out to our Electrify Coalition, over 40 organizations that are uh, supporting and promoting uh, the all electric life as a way to decarbonize. If you'd like to join, please uh, go to our website, electrifynow.net and reach out to Brian or I, and we'll give you details. There's no cost to join. So uh, today's webinar, let's uh, dive into our subject on induction cooking. Why is induction cooking uh, important, Brian? Thanks, Joe. Well, uh, I think it's really important to really start high level when we're talking about all these topics and put them in context about why these things fit into this whole idea of electrifying everything and electrifying your life. And let's start with this idea about when we're cooking with gas, which is kind of what most people consider to be the sort of the benchmark for cooking, that means we're cooking with methane. And methane, natural gas, methane, that accounts for about 25% of the US carbon emissions every year. And actually, the more we learn, the more we learn about how much methane leaks through the distribution system, even right up to our homes and even inside our homes, the more we know, we find out that methane is not that much cleaner than coal in terms of its impact to the environment. So this whole idea that the gas is this like clean burning fuel that we've been sort of grown up with as an advertising slogan from the utilities is not really correct. In our own homes, I think a lot of times people don't even realize that our homes, if we have gas in our homes, we're connected to these oil fields and these frack gas fields where we're pumping this stuff out of the air, piped for along great distances. It comes into our house in this underground pipe. We hardly even see it. Maybe you don't even know where your gas meter is, but then we burn that fuel in our homes and we produce pollution, but most of that pollution you don't really see because it goes up the, the vents and it, um, it's exhausted pretty high up in the air. And it's about four to eight tons of carbon emissions that we uh, create each year in our homes that are heated with gas. Some of that pollution, by the way, stays indoors, which we're gonna talk about. So um, that's another reason to be like fearful maybe about burning gas in our homes. But this whole idea that it's invisible and it's out of sight is important to, for people to understand that these things really have impacts. And the two big ones in our homes are our furnace and our water heater, which we're not gonna talk about today. But your gas range is going to produce about a half a ton of carbon per year, depending on how much you use it. If you if you cook a lot, like we do in our house, it could be more than that. Um, but the other reason why this is important, even though these are one of the smaller sort of culprits, so to speak, from a carbon standpoint, is that oftentimes, particularly in new homes, when people are building with gas, they want the gas range for cooking. And so that means they're gonna get a gas water heater and a gas furnace that come, sort of comes along for the ride. So you get this package deal where uh, the gas range is actually leading you to larger uh, emissions. So 
that's it, the story from a carbon emission standpoint. But the other reason to be excited about induction, because it, it produces fewer emissions, but it's also just a better uh, cooking experience. And we're going to dive into this in detail today. But just to top line it, the big reasons are one from a health perspective, a gas stove is producing all these indoor air quality problems with carbon monoxide and carbon uh, sorry, uh, nitrous oxide emissions that have been linked to asthma, particularly in children. There's a lot of studies that are coming out on this exact topic recently. Your, in your home, in your kitchen, can reach levels of indoor air pollution that would be illegal outside, outdoors if you don't have really, really good top of the line uh, exhaust system in your home. So from a health standpoint, it's better because we don't have any of those uh, emissions indoors but it's also just better from a performance standpoint. They, they heat up more quickly, they cool down more quickly, there's easier to control temperature, which we're gonna see from our amazing uh, partner today, Rochelle Boucher. Um, they're much easier to clean. They're safer because they stay cooler to the touch. They can get warm, but not like gas or even the old electric ones. So lots of things to be excited about with induction. We hope to answer all your questions today. We're gonna be talking about why these things are better, why they offer superior performance, um, what are the kind of ranges of things that are available that you should be thinking about, um, roughly how much they cost, and of course there's a huge range there. Um, we're going to be talking about cookware and what you might want to be thinking there, and then tips but even for, about how to install them and use them in, in your life. So we're going to be talking about this in kind of different levels, if you want to think of it that way, because it's pretty easy to go out and get a countertop induction hob for under $100. I just did this last week and I was amazed at how good these things work. Um, you can switch out your existing range, which we've done in our home. And I know Joe did this in his, his home. Or you might be thinking about remodeling your kitchen altogether, in which case you've got a lot more options in terms of configurations and, um, and even sizes that you could be thinking about. So we're gonna be covering this whole uh, gamut of topics today. And we have the ideal person to be talking about this with us today, Rochelle Boucher, owner of Kitchens to Life. She's a professional chef. She's worked for Monarch Home, Sub-Zero, Wolf, and Mila, showcasing their products, but also cooking um, as a high-end professional chef. And she's just become convinced that electric cooking options are the best way to go. And she's devoted her kind of career to that and started Kitchens to Life to elevate this electric kitchens conversation. And her partner, Robert Roth, will be off camera today, but huge props to him because he'll be giving us a lot of the information along the way. They have created this um, experience for people in their showrooms in San Francisco and also in Santa Clara, where you can come in and really see all the top of the line products that are available. So welcome to Rochelle. And Joe, you know, I remember we, we had Rochelle on, on about a year ago. Remind us how that went. Sorry, I muted. Uh, it was like the most um, popular webinar we've ever had and our, our best performing YouTube video at over a thousand views. Uh, so we obviously were so excited to have Rochelle back for today's updated uh, cooking on induction webinar. And we're so excited to have you today, Rochelle. All right, take it away, Rochelle. Okay. So a lot has changed. And then about a year ago when we started really working here in the showroom, People were talking about it. You, we got a good amount of induction or all electric clients. I'll, we'll talk about that. Um, but now, oh my goodness, just a year later, we are talking, clients are coming in talking about air quality, asking about induction. They're either like, I do it like this. I say they're either like, I think I'm ready for induction or I think I'm ready for induction or I think I'm ready for induction. <laughs> <laughs> and all it takes is just showing both the th both gas and induction sort of side by side and really finding out what's important to them. And I'm telling you, it has been amazing uh, how many people are absolutely adopting it with excitement and joy. So that's what's changed. And uh, let's get into it. There's a lot wow. to talk about today. Absolutely. Well, you know, I just want to remind people, we'll be um, asking Rochelle questions along the yeah. way here. And if you have questions, please put them in the um, Q&A and yes. we will try to make sure that your questions get answered uh, along the way um, or we'll answer them ourselves if we can. So thank you. So what do you got for us to see? I mean, I, I, I know you guys have showrooms in both um, 
uh, Santa Clara and also San Francisco. And, and, and by the way, I think um, it's important for everyone to know, particularly those of you who might be tuning in from California, um, go and visit these places because they're amazing. But can you describe a little bit what the showrooms are like? Yes, absolutely. So what we're trying to do is put together such a great example of, uh, you know, not only uh, live products in the showrooms. So many appliance showrooms have no induction at all, or it's just sitting there kind of dusty. Well, trust me, ours are not dusty. They're cooking all the time. So we have um, this beautiful product from Elica, which I'm gonna use. Mila has come in um, and put in some gorgeous things. We have Decor has put in a live induction cooktop for us and their parent company is Samsung. We have a live Gaganau induction cooktop in the back and they're uh, connected to Bosch and Thermidor. So we have live product that you can come and use we you know, need to schedule in advance, but we also do webinars and all kinds of things. We are working with tech companies to get their group teams involved. So there's a lot happening, uh, stuff with the AIA. So, but enough about us, let's start talking about induction and we'll use the stuff and explain a little bit more as we go because there's so many choices. So let's define induction a little bit. And, and first I always start with what induction is not. One of the probably biggest burdens in, in, in my world um, in, this, in this aspect is the confusion of induction with old school electric. And trust me, I get it. I have super smart people that come in here and go, oh, I hate electric. And I'm like, I know, but it's not, we're not talking about the old inefficient, horrible coil. We're not talking about that awful radiant uh, induction or uh, electric that gets so hot and impossible to control. It's the almost the opposite of that. Yes, induction works on electric, but what this is, and we'll show you in a couple slides way down the line in the presentation, what the inductors look like. But if you take a look in the next uh, image, what induction is, is it is an incredible, incredible way to heat up actually the pan. So what there is underneath all of these magical cooktops, there is a uh, copper coil. It puts out a low and safe magnetic wave that actually moves the molecules in your pan. And yes, we're gonna talk about cookware. It creates heat directly in the pan. So it is a whole other game. And as I cook, I'll cook some stuff. As a matter of fact, I'll get something started right now. And we'll talk about myths and truths, features, benefits, confusion, whatever. So if I put this on, this is an induction cooktop by Elica. Uh, it's gorgeous. It's out of Italy. And what I'm going to do is I put it on and then I select my location. Each one of these is called a hob rather than a burner because they don't inefficiently heat up and slowly transfer. What they do is they are creating that magnetic wave. So this is cool water. Um, and I just put it on and it got actually hot on the bottom. So don't do that. Um, but it was cool water. And I just put it on on power boost. So what we do when people come in and they're asking about gas and electric, of course, we want people to get the right thing for them. There are new ordinances and new mandates about um, new construction with no new gas lines. So for those people, I'm like, guess what? You're gonna get something amazing. But there's a lot of education and inspiration that has to happen. You can see right here, this is already boiling two to three times faster than gas. And we will talk about ventilation when we talk about well, down the line, but this actually has a central ventilation. So architects, designers, this is something that uh, our clients are swooning over. I have two architects right now that are putting this into their own home because architects have wanted overhead hoods to go away for a long time. <laughs> so this is really amazing. And then not only does this heat up so fast, but then when it turns off, your off is instantaneous. So one of the myths is, oh, it's not as powerful as gas. Absolutely wrong. As a matter of fact, we'll talk about efficiencies down the line, but about 80, 70 to 80 or 80 percent or more of the heat that is generated goes right into the cooking. If you have, say, a 20,000 BTU gas burner, right, super high BTU, 60, 70, maybe 80, 60, 70 plus percent of that heat is coming out 
onto the handles, into the room, it's not being used to cook. So if you have 20,000 BTUs and you subtract more than half of that, you're not cooking very powerfully. So there's an enormous power difference between that. The confusion is, of course, we're talking BTUs with gas versus watts with induction, and it's very confusing. I get it. So that's something really fun. So we talked a little bit about what induction is. One of the things that's tricky, though, we have clients we're working with, like I said, uh, uh, some tech companies, as well as individuals who say, look, I love your fancy range atop, and we'll talk more about cooktop choices in a minute, but I, I can't do a huge remodel right now, or I might want to switch out my gas, but I'm not sure. So this is where we talk about the plug and play. And you've alluded to that a little bit. We'll dialogue about this. But if you take a look, there is a difference between what's called, like I said, a burner and a hob. So the burner is the inefficient heat, gas, or old electric. Um, and then a hob is just a, a, a creating that, that uh, force. It's a little confusing because in Europe and around the world, they sometimes call the whole induction top a hob. So there's a lot of confusing nomenclature. But if we go to the next one, let's talk about plug and play. So yes, you can get a plug in hob for sure. The tricky thing again about those is what's the difference between one that's 50 bucks and one that's a hundred bucks or one that's more than that. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then they all have sort of different interfaces. With gas cooking, whether it's a cooktop or a range, again, we'll clarify that in a minute. They all kind of work the same. You sort of turn a knob, essentially. What is tricky is with these interfaces, they're all different. So you're kind of left feeling a little confused. And I understand that. So flip to the next one, and then we'll dialogue a little bit about your own experiences, guys. But there's a couple, um, if you buy a hob that's very inexpensive, say $50 or less, they're going to be quite fragile often, and they can make some sort of louder noises. And we'll talk about noise and induction um, in a little bit. But if you take a look, like here's some, the new wave is pretty fun. They're anywhere between sort of $90 on up to sort of like 200. The new wave are fun because they come usually often with like a pan that goes with them, which is, can be cool. Um, they even can come in like a carrying case. So a lot of you that are working in, um, what is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of you that are working in um, advocacy, you know, you might want to take these around with you so they can be a really good choice. Um, if you look at then the ducks top, the ducks top is a little bit bigger. Generally, they're a little bit heavier. But then again, when you look for ducks top, there's a huge price range again from around 100 all the way up. Um, and so as you see them, some of them are going to be a little bit stronger in the body little bit heavier. Um, sometimes they have sort of more subtle controls or a little bit more power. So instead of sort of jumping up from temperature, you have a little bit more like subtle, subtle temperature control. Um, they have on off all kinds of timers and things like that. So there are a lot of differences. There's even a uh, ducks top makes a commercial one. You know, I work mostly in the residential world, but my best friend and brother in, in arms back in Pennsylvania, Chris Scarlaza, he is the residential or the commercial equivalent of me. Duckstop makes some commercial grade uh, and many other companies that you can put a super heavy stock pot on and boil that thing a lot faster. So there are hobs and one of you guys has a little experience. So let's yeah. share it. Talk well, about your just, hob experience. Yeah, we just got one in our home. We were thinking of it as kind of like a, a resilience thing. And we might even take it camping with us too because we have a small battery we can run it off of. Nice. Which, which is really cool. But so we've tried it out uh, this last week and I've just been amazed at how powerful it is. It's simple. We didn't spend a lot of money. I think ours were $70 or something. So I, I, you know, I was just kind of like wanted to see what's out there. And I was pretty amazed, nicely built thing. I think, I think the one thing that I saw when I was looking at them, some of them come with plastic that, that have plastic parts on them. And I, I thought that was a bad idea because if you have a hot pot and you, you know, like 
drag it over and it hits the plastic yeah. and melts the plastic, that'd be kind of dumb. Um, but I think the more the expen the more expensive ones don't really have that, I don't think. But yeah, I was amazed how how easy it is to work with. We're not alone. I love it. Stephanie Partridge is saying the same thing. She bought an induction burner, uh, so she didn't have to get the stove first and says she loves it. Great way to try it first. Um, Michael awesome. says, uh, uh, is the induction stove top, and I'm not sure if he's referring to the hob or the stove top, 120 volt or 240 volt? Um, Got it. And we'll talk about cooktops next, but yeah. these are all, these are 110, and that actually happened with um, one of our uh, a group that another group that I was looking for, they wanted to do a chef demo and they had a, a 241 and couldn't plug it in anywhere. So generally the hobs you'll find are, are going to be 110. You can even get a double, a double hob at 110, which is great. So a couple things, so they're so important. I have uh, some people that come to us for consulting and they say, oh, we're going to do a a whole, we're going to give hobs to a whole bunch of lower income homes because we want to see sort of a asthma improvement in asthma or sort of health outcomes. And my first question always to them is, that's awesome. What is the, what do they have for ventilation? Right? Because even though you are not dealing with nearly the same amount of particulate, the same amount of, uh, and, and none of those noxic, uh, noxious gases, you still have a particulate matter, you still have some fumes, you still have some moisture that you still have to get out. So the idea that you can just get a hob and just plug it in anywhere like it's an Instapot is not true. So yes. that causes a challenge. Because, for, you know, what do you do then? Like, I will tell you right now, true confession. I melted a hob, a nice one, because I put it on top of gas, used the ventilation, knocked the gas a little bit, and the freaking thing turned on. So don't do that. That could have actually been super dangerous. So the first thing you have to think about is where do you position it? And frankly, you could just put it outside. So if you, if you do remodel, keep that hob, use it for outdoor cooking. It's fantastic, but it is a tricky thing to solve. What I did at home was yanked the, um, uh, the knobs off of my gas uh, cook to a range until I can get that freaking fire breathing thing out of there. I only use induction and my combi steam oven, but you really have to think about what the ventilation is. And often we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into um, cooktops, but um, interesting conundrum, right? It, it really is. And, you know, I think the thing, you know, just to point out, because there's no doubt that that is better from an emissions, from an indoor air quality to, to cook with induction. But as, as Rochelle is talking about, particularly when you cook at high heat, particularly when you get over yeah. like 400 degrees or something like that, you start to get um, particulate emissions and things. It doesn't matter what the source of your heat is. It's more what's happening. This is what's happening in your pot. You know, so that's yeah. you got to have good ventilation for that, no matter what you're cooking with. Absolutely. And we'll talk more about that from a design standpoint. I know we have some questions, but let me show you something briefly. And then I'm going to also cook um, on a, an egg. Meanwhile, and we'll keep questions going. But cookware, I understand, right? There's all oh, you can't use this in that cookware. Frankly, very few, very little cookware doesn't work on induction. If you have sort of that very cheap aluminum stuff, which is not very healthy to cook in anyway, that's not gonna work. Um, pure copper doesn't work. I have my favorite cookware on earth. Um, uh, Heston Culinary produces this incredible line. It's, it's gorgeous, it's very premium, but I love it. You don't, you can get cast iron works, but look, instead of copper here, look, the magnet test, the magnet doesn't stick to the copper, but it sticks to the bottom. So this company is going really hard on supporting the induction uh, cookware movement. Also nonstick, you know, depending on the kind. And it's a cute little uh, pot shaped magnet. This is the Heston Culinary Nanobond. Now these are gorgeous premium pans. Cast iron is beautiful. All kinds of cookware work. You just have to see if the magnet sticks. Okay. And one other thing regarding cookware, sometimes when you turn on a, a, a cooktop or a hob, 
it won't make noise. And then sometimes you'll put a pan on and it does make noise, right? So sometimes people think that that's the induction itself. Often, there are different noises, we'll talk about them. Often, what it is, is it's the actual way that the metal is sandwiched and it creates an, a hum from the pan. Or if the pan's really thin, it can just vibrate a little bit. So those are some things to think about when you're hearing something that you're not sure about. Yeah, that's a great point, Rochelle. I mean, I, I did hear, I have induction, never have heard a noise, love it at all, but I heard from one user who I think bought a cheaper stove or, or maybe it was his pans and said he heard some some noise. Sure. That, that's a great point to, to emphasize that it's usually your cookware that would be making the noise, not necessarily the, the induction. Yeah, and that's why it's important to, you know, there's price points are enormous. Well, there's such a difference. So we'll we'll talk about that. But any other questions? I'm just uh, using my nonstick here and just cooking this little egg. It's really fun. Lot, there's lots of questions. So many coming in already. Uh, I mean, some folks are what, just wondering, and I know you'll get to the, the cooktops in a sec, but the, the longevity of, of induction cooktops, either Hobbs or, or Cooktops. Let's do that. So let's go into, um, let's talk about uh, cooktops and, and all of that because the it's, it's very confusing. I understand. Um, so a cooktop is what this is. This is a drop-in piece that's surrounded by the counter. So again, it can be gas, it can be electric, it can be induction. Um, like I said, this one by Elica is pretty magical because it's a built-in um, cooktop and ventilation. So not all induction has that, but that's a kind of a fun thing. Um, I just, I, I love that. That's just awesome. Um, sorry, where were we? So cooktop. So you're going to, now the, the difference between a cooktop and what we're gonna talk about in a minute, a range top, is that with a cooktop, you have generally different power. So maybe a bigger burner, a smaller burner. In the case of induction, your hobs are gonna be sometimes powered differently. So we're gonna show you some different versions of that. So this is a range top. So when people come in here and they want to look at appliances, we always talk about like, what's a cooktop? And then what's a range? Later on in the presentation, we're gonna talk about the whole range, which is the oven and the cooktop all in one. We've got some great images of that. And then we have the range top, which is that very high powered top of the range. So with a range and a range top in gas or dual fuel, which is gas and, um, and electric in the oven, you're going to see a very, um, you're going to see a lot of high power, sort of high power all the way across, high BTUs usually. With your induction range tops, they're going to vary because there's a lot they can do under this glass. So we'll take a look at that. We'll move on to the next thing. Um, now, if we talk about indu induction cooktops, absolutely, we wanna think about sort of longevity, interface, style. So same thing, when people come in and if they're just looking to replace or remodel, it can be really hard because if you have a 30 or 36 inch, say, gas cooktop, that's not necessarily going to be the same cutout as another 30 to 36 in gas, cook, gas cooktop or induction. That's so really tricky. Now induction cooktops are very narrow. They're not as deep. So you're gonna gain back underneath your counter, which is great. And they don't need a lot of insulation. So there are some really cool things. It's really easy to put an oven right underneath here, which a lot of our European uh, guests will, will have recognized that look. Um, but if you take a look, we, we have here the Sharp. This is in the, uh, so these are sort of priced for 30 inch cooktops induction. So that's in like $1,500 range. Um, you know, you still get some really cool features. So if you take a look, there's your um, 240 volts and 40 amps, right? And then you're going to get some really sort of nice power on that. There's a nice range in the, in the watts. Um, so you're also going to look at style. Some of them have a more demonstrative sort of, in the lower price points, they're maybe not as subtly designed. So you can kind of see the areas. If you look at the Samsung, that's a relative of the decor cooktop that we have here, which is really fun. And that is a really nice, it has a couple more, a little bit more power. You're still at 40 amps on that. 
but it's really hard to um, sort of discern the differences. That one, the Samsung has this really fun thing called a virtual plane. So when you, with the Samsung and the decor, when you put the pan on, you can actually see a little blue flame uh, kind of image below. And it's great. It's sort of- Shows you the sun. It's showing yeah. us something that we're used to. Yeah, it's really fun. It's like the electric cars that make the fake motor sound. Um. Exactly. <laughs> and then the, the sort of upsell. So these are in the affordable and mid-range. Um, if you go to sort of affordable luxury, and again, yes, these are 30 inch induction cooktop is generally more expensive than the equivalent gas. It can do so much more. Uh, it's it's such an uh, such an advanced product, but I understand. I'm not a person who can just throw down all the money in the world to get my kitchen redone. So I get it. Um, but there are some other ways that you can offset those costs when you're building and remodeling. So if you look at the Bosch, the Bosch, Thermidor, Gaggenau are all one incredible family. So they've got sort of low, medium, and high higher price points. So they're really fun, and they're getting very excited about this movement. That uh, cooktop is amazing. We had one of their trainers over here the other day showing us. I mean, you can press a button and as you move the pan back, it goes down in temperature. It has fantastic power. And that one's 30 amps, which is really cool. So you're now, you know, when you think about how much amps you're trying to put into these all electric homes, that can be a, 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 a smart thing to consider. And then, like I said, the decor, which is sort of the uh, more sophisticated cousin of, no, no offense, Samsung, it's the, the pricier, feature rich, what's my word? Um, that is, again, see how it's got the virtual flame. It has a really nice 4,800 watts in the middle. I mean, talk mm. about powerful. Uh, okay. yeah. Really cool. So those are some of just some of the ones that I work with a lot, and um, they're really amazing. Well, As you go up in prices, again, you're seeing more subtle. And then here we'll go to the top. The, the top. So, um, and again, I like all of these. Don't get me wrong. They just have, again, it's like cars. I'm pretty simple car person. Um, you know, some of you are like, oh no, cars, you know, how you roll. So if you take a look, we've got the Wolf, uh, Sub-Zero Wolf, uh, or Wolf division of Sub-Zero is a very, uh, you know, very known for high power gas and dual fuel. They're going hard on induction. It's really exciting. Their director of innovation uh, is uh, an induction super fan, just like me. So if you look, this one's more in the $2,700. Ooh, I gotta start cooking here. I just put this on, $2,700 range. Um, and that gives you even stronger gas uh, or sorry, even stronger power, stronger glass as well. Sorry, cooking, talking together. Um, and it's gonna give you tons and tons of features. And then stylistically, it's really beautiful. It's more subtle. It just has a real substantial feel to it. And many of these, keep in mind, can be, um, can you guys hear me all right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm doing lots of stuff here. I got it. You can't, you can't play around here. You got it. As soon as you turn on, you got to be ready, ready to cook. Let me just turn it down a little. So um, you're going to see, you know, they can be installed flush, completely flush, or a little bit proud. If you do, I suggest installing them with the, uh, the proud mount with the sort of metal band around it. Just gives it a little more strength, a little more durability. Uh, but there's, you think there's, there's a, a you think there's an advantage one way or another to having it um, flush versus uh, a little bit proud. Do you think there's? Yeah, there's I'm a fan there? of proud mount for a couple of reasons. Number one, flush is hard. So if if I have clients that are, I'm just uh, doing some wok cooking here uh, with these shishito peppers. These are blistering up. I actually turned it down a little so I can hear myself because I've got the ventilation. Um, so yes, if you, I, it's hard to flush mount. So what we'll usually do here at Monarch is we'll arrange to get the counter to, uh, the cooktop to the client beforehand so that they can cut, you know, cut, measure twice, cut once, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we try to do that. Um, and it's harder. And then you can't really seal it in very well. If you have to take it out for repair, it's a little harder. If you crowd mount them, they're still really low. 
And often they have kind of a nice strong metal band around them that just gives them extra strength. And it's just a little easier to clean around that. Yeah. But take a look at the Thermidor. See that one? Uh, that one's amazing. As much as the Thermidor Freedom, Thermidor has three types of induction. The Freedom is, is expensive. It's uh, 4,900 around that for the 30 inch. But if you look on the top of it, we actually put the, the trainer actually showed us the inductors that live underneath. Instead of having just an inductor here or here, which is not bad, they have inductors all the way throughout. So you can cook anywhere on the surface mm -hmm. and it's really, really amazing. Nice. Um, and the difference on that is, let me turn this uh, down for a minute. The difference on that is that you are going to, you can just move it all around. So, and that's really beautiful. It's got kind of a beautiful subtle gray color. And that is also the relative of the Gaganelle, which is again, very stylistically beautiful. So. Hopefully that helps. Lots of options. I mean, questions. that's awesome. I mean, I noticed when I was just doing a little Google search the other day, I was amazed at how many options there are with cooktops. It seems like there's in some ways, maybe more options with cooktops than there are with ranges in terms yeah. of what's out there. It's, Charlotte Absolutely. is asking, is there a glass, there's a glass versus ceramic range top material? Is that a, is that a choice or are they all glass? They're all glass, but they're very, very fortified glass. So they're extremely strong. Um, you are going to, you are going to get some scratches depending on what you do. So yes, for example, let me see if I have it here. Ah. If you have a silicone mat, you can actually cook right on it. Um, so if you've got sort of a, a pan that's a little bit raggedy on the bottom, um, or you can just put paper. So I'm cooking right now. You can just do that. That's insane. I yeah. I know. Isn't wow. that? I, it it never wild. ceases to amaze me. So yeah, I turned this down just a little so I can uh, not have the ventilation on as loud. Hey, but, Rochelle, uh, I know that um, one, one thing that I think is coming up in the chat here is that please. Um, you, you know, I think I, I don't want to. I don't think we we want to. Don't want to miss uh, state things. You don't have to spend a lot of money to get one of these no. more expensive cooktops in order to get the power you need. No. Is that true? Is you, that true? You, no, you do not. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, when we talk about the range, no, you don't. Um, so if you look, that's why I sort of put those wattages yeah. there. And again, we're talking about if you have a home style, uh, like a, a, a normal sort of non-professional gas cooktop, right? With sort of the smaller burners, a couple little ones, that's not very powerful, right? So even if you get a lower price uh, induction hub, you are already leveling up in power and safety and cleanliness like you cannot believe just from the lower price. But as you go up, you're seeing again, some design changes you're seeing even a little bit more strength in glass you're seeing some really cool features built in that i don't even have time to get into right now but um no you do not have to you're rocking a hob at home for 70 bucks i know it's amazing i, I that thing is plenty powerful enough it'll boil water and it seems like almost instantly right um, there. Can you speak a little bit to this, uh, the the surface temperature of the of the glass? I mean, I saw you put that um, piece of paper down under there, but you know, talk to us a little bit about the temperature of the glass. Yeah, absolutely. So after a while, so if you take a look, like if I, let me let me move my stuff out of here, and you notice like one of the things when we talk about safety, like look how bratty. And I'm so used to doing this now, so this is on, right? While cooking, for example, let's talk about this briefly. As long as you have a big wide bottom pan, you are in business. But I'm so used to doing this now all the time and reaching over. I look at the handles. You, This is blazingly hot in here. Look, incredible. So you are gonna get heat reflected back. So if I do this, let me just keep cooking here. If I, I'm just gonna put my garlic in. I have to come up with some yummy food. This is my lunch, okay? <laughs> Don't distract my lunch. No, sorry. So, it, so it's important to know that even though you won't sort of catch yourself on fire, all of that, you can still get a, a hefty burn. You can still burn food like nobody's business on this, okay? So that's a tricky thing because you have to sort of have your stuff prepped. 
none of this like put it on medium high and go over here and chop you gotta be ready um just put my garlic in so i'm <sighs> doing that but i'll get back to temp surface temperature i promise now what's so amazing is you put your garlic in, I can just quickly go down to two and my heat changes instantly. I don't have to put my garlic in and yank it away. And you notice I don't have to do this to try to see what my temperature is. Um, but if I do turn this off, I will see there's a lot of different ways that it's indicated that this is hot here. And I am not gonna put my hand on this at this point. Okay, so yes, it can get quite hot underneath, but not nearly the same as no. gas. Yeah, yeah, not nearly the same as gas or old electric, right? Um, oh, yeah, man. Electric. oh Absolutely. my gosh, you, you, you could take a half an hour to cool down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, you know, with families and kids, you can really, really get that early starter cooking lessons going at a younger age. That's awesome. And speaking of heat, Rochelle, the, you know, we were at a, we stayed at a Airbnb over the weekend uh, in central Oregon and we were cooking on a gas stove and we we're like, oh, we forgot how much, you know, if you're over those cooked, uh, the, those pots and pans, like it's so hot. There's so much, you know, heat that's escaping from, from gas uh, just in general, even, even above the pans. Um, Absolutely. As I mentioned, my friend Chris Garlaza, who does a lot of this work in the commercial side, listen, I understand restaurant chefs are like, what? What do you mean? What's going on? And the restaurant association is making like this such a negative thing. When do you, you can't imagine. I was a chef in Florida. It's so mind numbingly hot. You can't believe it. And so the, the idea of safety, whether it's commercial or residential, I will never, I, I'm so, I will never want to go back to having that much heat. I'm 4'11". I'm right here in the, in the heat. I get none of that heat. So think about that from a safety point of view, but also from an equity point of view, when you're talking about restaurants um, and it's let's really becoming important. Right? Yeah, let's talk about restaurants. There are a lot of questions about that. What's happening yeah. in the restaurant world? Yeah, well, that's definitely, again, I'm very much on the residential side. Um, but I learned a lot um, from my friend, Chef Chris. He's amazing. So you should definitely get him on a webinar. He's a blast. So he talks about that a lot, but it's really about knowing of the incredible appliances that are out there um, and how they can do so many things. And so one of the things, we'll, we'll, and we'll get into ranges and all of that, but one of the things I talk about when clients come in here um, we talk about what I call the whole electric kitchen. So in restaurants, they don't really use gas that much. They're using things like I'm gonna use now. This is pretty fun. These are some um, raw eggs in a little paper carton and I'm gonna just stick them in here. You can't see them off camera. And we're gonna cook these babies. All right, so I'm just gonna get this in. I know you can't see, you're wondering what I'm doing. All right, large. Cool, maybe you can see. All right, so we're going to use, this is a steam and oven together. So when I talk to my clients about an electric kitchen, it's not just the battle of the cooktops. It's like, well, do you know all the amazing things you can do in your convection ovens? A lot. Restaurant chefs use ovens for everything, bacon and roasting and all kinds of things. Same thing if you have a combi steam oven. This is a Mila combi steam, it's amazing. It's a broiler and burning things. It's, a, it's an oven and it's a steamer. Um, so right now, yeah, we're showing it. Right now I am putting salmon in here. Uh, I'm steaming, I'm going to cook those eggs right in the carton. And then right after I do that, I'm gonna bake off our pizzas for lunch. It's going to become an oven. There's also speed oven technology, which is microwave and oven. So this is, you know, Gaginow has stuff and Thermidor and Sharp has some amazing things. Um, yeah, the VP of Sharp is coming on really strong. Peter Riefeld is coming on really strong about electric kitchens and induction. So yay, Peter. So lots of things to think about. Perfect. That's great. Yeah, thanks. You know, I know there's here's a great question in the uh, Q and A, and I'm I'm stumped to answer it, so I'm going to throw it to you. What are the negatives? Sure. Couldn't think Absolutely. Of 
nothing's perfect, people. Uh, absolutely. One of the hard things very much um, is, you know, for me, I, I say that it's kind of like you have the phone on the wall with the dial. Remember that with the long, long cord? Some of you don't. <laughs> yeah. Right. And you have that and you're used to using that. And then all of a sudden somebody hands you an iPhone and they're like, here you go. It's amazing. See you later. Right. And you're standing there going, what is this? How do I, what, what? So first of all, it's just even understanding it, feeling stupid, feeling like I know how to do something already. And somebody's telling me like, I have to do this differently. And I understand that understanding that you absolutely can walk cook, but there's adaptations. You can't use the round bottom walk. Um, adapting certain recipes. For example, you can't char a pepper right in the flame. You can blister it really well, or you can char it under your electric broiler, but there are things you have to adapt to. Um, these can, even though gas ranges and appliances have a higher repair rate, if you really do break one of these, it's a more expensive repair. Um, understanding how to work all the cool things, that can be really hard. Mm -hmm. um, I always come at it with empathy, understanding, and a true respect for where the clients are coming from. Are they trying to use it just to cook hot dogs and chicken nuggets? Because A, I'm coming to lunch, and B, you know, maybe it doesn't need to be that fancy or are they trying to really level up and get some exciting, you know, next level cooking going on. So those are some things. Um, they can, it can scratch a little bit. All cooktops can scratch. Um, so those are some of the top level things that I can think about. But that being said, the negatives of gas, for me, like the, the, the challenges or negatives of induction, the list is pretty short for me. The list that I will never accept again on gas is, is enormous, enormous. Great point. I am also a fancy private chef. Um, I can't tell you, I'll have to kill you, but I work for some amazing people. I will literally bring my Heston Q smart induction hob to their house if they have gas because I want to cook better. I don't want to have to backtrack. So I get it, but I've gotten there over time. Great. So uh, should we, we talk about ranges a yes, little bit? Yes, I was going to say, now, we sidetracked you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about build it new um, because this can be cooktops, ranges. It can be, and I'm searing, by the way. I know I'm just cooking and like not telling you anything. So again, beautiful, crispy skin beautiful control. This is a sear salmon. You can sear steak. That's another myth. Like you can't sear anything. Yeah, you can really well. Um, it's beautiful. In the Heston Q smart hob, which I have, I love it. You can actually measure the thickness of the salmon, set it, and the pan will tell you when to flip it and control the temperature. Yeah. It's so fun. Actually, I mean, um, you, can sear, I, you can sear and that's better because... Built in. Yeah, I think I think you can sear better because you can get that really hot heat you need, and then you can Absolutely. turn it back down so you don't overcook the salmon. You know, Absolutely. you just and again, cool handle. Eventually, the handle will get warm up, and then cool all around. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing. So let's talk about build it new because yes, it is hard when you remodel and you're just trying to switch out a cooktop or a range. It's really difficult. You what is hard is having to figure out all of your electrical and maybe make some pretty expensive modifications. And I totally understand that. Um, and as Alex, our director here talks about, you're not just electrifying one thing. It's the house, it's the solar, it's the cars. So it's, it's tricky. Um, but if you are talking about build it new, this is where it can actually get even a little bit easier, right? If we say, let's talk about ranges. So we talked about cooktops. Um, now we're talking about ranges. Ranges are the whole thing together and there are all different price points. So if you look at that Frigidaire, that is a standalone freestanding range. And what that means is it can just sort of stand on the side. It doesn't need to be sort of built in. And it often has that sort of control around the back. Well, a freestanding range is not that fun with gas because you got to reach over it to control it. Well, with induction, freestanding range makes a lot more sense. 
That one at $1,700, which is sort of a screaming deal, seems to have a very high rating. Uh, people seem to really like it. From hey, I've seen Rochelle. I've seen, that, I've seen that for under a thousand dollars. That exact model. I mean, no I've, kidding. Yeah, I've seen That's it. That's amazing. I've never used it, but like, if somebody has it, I'll come over. Let's cook. Um, so again, you're looking at your watts. It's a forty amp, and not a lot of color. You know, black or stainless, pretty subtle. Um, if you look at now, really kind of going to a, 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 a definitely a higher higher level to Bosch. Bosch has the 800 series and that's really nice. That's 40 amps, really nice. Hi, Brian, sorry, I, I guess here. So that's a really, really nice piece. And again, now you're looking at something that is more of a slide in. So again, controls on the front, not on the back, more professional looking. Um, more subtle in design. And again, they have all kinds of cool features and things built into them that you can't even, would never be able to do on gas. Wow. Is yeah. there, somebody's asking if there's a 24 inch range. There is, yes. Becco has one. Yes, Becco. And I believe Brian, who just walked by, um, is with Aga. And, and Viking, and I believe Aga has one as well. So to your point, fewer options on ranges at this point. Most of them are 30 and 36. Um, it's, it's harder. Uh, you're not going to get as many choices as you would with gas or dual fuel. So in luxury, this is really fun. But again, I mean, these are expensive, but they are in dual fuel as well. With brands like Milo, Wolf, Thermador, um, Viking, those brands, they are going to, actually Viking's luxury brand family is, um, is Aga, excuse me. So if you're looking at those brands, now you are putting a very premium induction top on a very premium range. So you've got gorgeous slide out racks and all kinds of directions of picture perfect convection heat. The Wolf is beautiful, clean, clean, clean styling. I mean, this thing is heavy and sturdy and it will replace any Wolf range you can imagine. The Mila is one I love. Now that has built-in programs. It actually has steam injection. It's all kinds of cool stuff. So again, you're really looking like cars, right? You've kind of caught your basic ones that'll get you there in, in style. And then you can go up to more and more feature rich. So these are like your Teslas. All right. Um, Questions on any of that? Well, uh, so, oh, go ahead, Brian. Do you have one on the ranges? Uh, well, yeah. There's there's some questions about um, longevity. Yep. You know, like how, how how long these things will will operate, and is there a difference maybe between some of the lower end ones and the higher end ones in terms of, you know, I don't know, warranties or anything like that. Yeah, I will tell you. Um, I'm a big LinkedIn maniac, as you guys might probably know. And um, one of my best friends I've ever made on LinkedIn, we haven't even yet met in person, is Steve Scheinkoff. He creates the best content on the planet for induction or for appliances. He's out of Yale Appliance in Boston. Shout out to him and his whole team. If you wanna know about longevity of any product, mm. if you wanna learn anything about appliances, like why you can't get any right now, go to that website, but you are gonna see some incredible comparisons on, because they install, deliver and repair for many, 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 many years and they kept all the data. So they have the most, uh, they're way better than Consumer Reports, sorry. Um, and they will tell you all of those things, um, but you're gonna see fantastic longevity as you go up, um, more as you go up in price, because again, you are building a sturdier thing. Um, and induction has been around for a long time, but only now is it to the point where it's easier to use, it's functioning better, they're putting it on top of really amazing ovens. Um, so it's going to vary by brand and there's still a lot of data coming in. I think I found the website, you were at Yale Appliances, I, I found on their blog. They have a learning and that's their blog. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I was about it. to do it. Oh, you did it. Okay, good. Thanks. Yeah. They have an induction buying guide that is a work of art. It is Sistine Chapel style. It's While we're on the question of uh, other resources, someone was asking about your commercial 
your doppelganger who's your commercial uh, who's that can we put that link in there too always i will promote him till the end of time that's chef christopher garalaza he's with forward dining solutions um and so definitely get him on a way he's a webinar he works all around the country with commercial uh all kinds of commercial outfits tech companies all of that he speaks chef he is a chef and he's one of my best friends so you can find him um at forward dining solutions um link with me on linkedin i'll get you right to chef christopher let's chat on linkedin there's so many good things happening there um but either way find chris let's put that link in the blog forward dining solutions He's out of Pennsylvania, and we actually finally got to meet right here in real life um, a couple of weeks ago, and there were tears. <laughs> Love awesome. joy. Hey, hey uh, Rochelle, the um, a couple of folks are one folks asking about pacemakers, and I've heard that come up before. You know, right. you're there. Yeah, any thoughts on pacemakers and induction? Absolutely, and I I understand. I again, I, I have a lot of respect for that question. Um, these are very very low. Um, magnetic waves, very, very low. Um, to quote Chef Chris, uh, he says, well, unless you lay on it, which you wouldn't do in your gas, you're incredibly safe. But actually there is some very good data and studies um, besides just being like two wise guy chefs. Um, there are very good data and studies that have shown that it's absolutely safe, um, but yeah, don't lay on it. Okay, perfect, great, uh, cool. Brian, you got a question for Chef Rochelle? Um, well, how are we doing, uh, Rochelle? Are we, I don't want to bog you down. Or do you have a- uh... Not at all. Bog me down, I'm making my lunch. Are you I know, good? it looks really so, delicious. Right, right now, um, let's talk about, so I think we just have one more little bit here, but then I also want to, um, I really want to acknowledge Again, like I have incredible confidence in this. I've been doing this for decades. I have tons of experience. I'm in love with this. I, this is my life's calling. That being said, I really have a lot of understanding. This is my, look, come on, look at the cleanup. Da, 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 da. <laughs> love it. Sorry, I was just enjoying my cleanup. Um, but I have a lot of respect and understanding for different types of cuisines. There's a lot of people who will say, um, well, you can't cook Indian cuisine, you can't cook Asian cuisines. And I understand that perception, but I work directly with a lot of people, chefs like uh, Chef Tu David Fu, who is one of the top Vietnamese chefs in the nation. He comes here and cooks all the time. Um, I cook with a lot of um, uh, Indian families, a lot of people who it's just a matter of just switching out a few things. Boy, I mean, talk about non coming off of this thing. It's gorgeous. So I really have a lot of respect and I have a lot of respect for my architects, designers, and builders that have been designing and building for a certain mindset. And all of a sudden we're saying, no, 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 that's old. That's no good. It's dangerous. It's going to kill you. And I get it. I understand that there's a whole big switch. One of my green builders um, uh, in Denver that I got to meet recently when I did an event in Denver, um, Thrive Home Builders, Bill said to me, I don't want to be a salesperson. Like I'm selling houses, I'm building stuff. So I understand that you're having to, to, to try this out learn about it, learn about all the different topics and then build and design around it. It's a, it's a big ask and I get that. The good news is, is that it's so fun and so cool. And if you try it yourself, that's what we do a lot is work with, the, with those of you out in the field and do a webinar with your hands-on so you get your own stories so that you can get excited about it yourself. Absolutely. Great. Well, I think we uh, we have a couple more questions we could finish up uh, with. Uh, Rochelle, somebody is asking, what are you using to clean that um, that cooktop? This is literally, I have a microfiber cloth and water right okay. now. Um, one of the things that's, uh, it, so many of these are sort of black and shiny. So even though the initial cleanup is really easy, 
sometimes like there'll be a little bit of something like a little tiny bit of grease on there. It's nothing like stuck on there at all. So I'll use like a little bit of um, like Barkeeper's Friend or like Mila has their own fabulous cleaner. So just kind of like that. And it just sort of gets any of that, um, you know, anything that was kind of just stuck on there a little bit. Um, and then I've actually found, look, I've got like a whole drawer. Look, you lose no space. The Grove cleaner is great. So the, I, I was so excited. So the Grove multi-purpose cleaner, which is sort of the, you know, the refillable bottles, it works really well because you kind of have to polish it a little bit. That can be a little hard. Perfect. But it's a lot easier than gas. Um, and I know we were going to show some really beautiful examples. Oh, you yes. Thought, yeah. Maybe we should finish off with that. That was actually my yeah. request to do this. As I said, you know what? I want to see what people in your network have done. I want to see those success stories because that's really where the true inspiration comes from. Well, let's do that. And then uh, we can keep chatting here. I'm going to share yeah. my screen and... Uh, so we had, what we did is we asked a few of our friends and some of our coalition partners to send us some pictures of their work and we kind of have it, you know, um, organized loosely into sort of like more uh, entry level to a little more um, expensive versions. But this is this was that um, that Frigidaire model that you were talking about. And, great. I, and I was doing some just some, I just Googled it and the first thing that came up was like $1,000 at Best Buy or something what? like that. So. So these things are pretty. There, there are some that are that are um, pretty affordable, you know. Um, uh, but you know, this is a really modern-looking kitchen, I think, and with a pretty affordably priced thing. But you're going to have great cooking experience with that. I mean, like to I think to echo what Rochelle said, there's not a compromise by going with one of these lower-end ones in terms of the way it cooks, right? I mean, it's might yes not have no. all the features. I mean, it's like cars where, yeah. it, you know, I am very, I, I, I'm not fancy in a lot of my life, but I'm, I'm appliance <laughs> fancy. So I'll go with no fancy clothes or yeah. no Christian Lambertans, but I, I will definitely have my Mila Combi team. So everybody <laughs> rolls differently, That's um, true. but, That's but true. no, it's not, um, it, it is one area that, our industry, the appliance industry really has to tackle is these is this issue of equity. Because, you know, what do you do if you wanna just kind of do this very low end, you know, tying in the ventilation and all that. So I have a lot of respect for it. I'm, I'm on that side, so I get it. Yeah, notice the big, the nice big hood here. That's pretty important. I'll have Ikea cabinets and like Mila Combi steam and I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> And then here's a more kind of like entry level, uh, Ooh, nice. pop. but you know, the, like, you know, you can see these starting around 800 is what I was looking at. And, they, and as uh, Rochelle said, they can go up to several thousand dollars, depending on what you get. But um, I love the way that gives you that really clean aesthetic. And then over on the right is more of like a mid priced yeah. um, or you know, mid price range. Yeah, and on the left, you'll see that's where you've got the cooktop with the oven below, and that's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. Nice. And uh, this is from a, a bird's mouth design build. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Green Hammer was the first one, the second one was bird's mouth. Two really amazing outfits here. This is bird's mouth again, and also an uh, architect that um, beautiful. really fond of here in the Portland area, um, MZ. And this is a beautiful kitchen. And again, with that kind of mid-level cafe range, um, I have one of those actually, I um, love it. Um, you must have gotten it before the pandemic. Apparently so, I guess they're getting harder to, to, to get hold of now. Yes. And then, you know, as you step up in terms of slightly more, maybe more slightly more sophisticated, this is the Thermador 30 inch cooktop. I think you were mentioning this one, yeah? Oh, I love the Freedom Cooktop. Thermidor has three different levels, so that's what's really nice. And they have a streaming uh, promotion that they do a lot, which is called One, Two, Free. And it's it's one of the most aggressive promotions in um, in the, the appliance world. And it includes those cooktops, those uh, induction tops. Here's my 
steam my uh, hard boiled eggs. Nice. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna turn it into an oven and put my pizza in there. Keep going. That's awesome. So these are our friends, Green Hammer. And then we've got this one, one more picture here from Bird's Mouth. Um, this is Going Street Commons, an amazing all electric construction. All these people we're talking about, they really are part of the reason we love showcasing is because they're really onto this all electric homes, uh, completely electric homes. But this is a beautiful kitchen uh, with this Fisher, Fisher. Pickle range. Yeah. Fisher Pickle has some really nice stuff. You know, a lot of the European based companies are obviously they're not European, but um, there's they sell a lot of them in Europe. Um, so a lot of the non American companies do have a lot more choices, a lot more options. And for for me, what I'm really working with um, our reps and then the decision makers in the in the industry is to bring in more of these products to educate more on this. And it's you know. It was a little bit harder a year ago, but now the momentum is really going. So yeah. I'm able to say to some very top high level executives, what do you got for a 30, a 48 inch range? Yeah. Um, there's not a lot for 48 inch ranges. For me as a fancy private chef, I know that very few people use even half of the power of, 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 that a 48 inch provides. Um, I would never want a 48 inch range. I, you know, 36 is plenty, but um, I understand sort of that design challenge to have like this gigantic 48 inch range and mentally what that tells people rather than things that look a little bit slicker and more modern. The yep. other thing that I've noticed, which is unusual or interesting is that we're asking people to try this very high tech thing, right? And we're like, it's great, it's cool, and you're gonna love it, and you can design around it, no problem. But then what's so interesting is there is a big market for people to get induction ranges specifically that look a more old fashioned. <laughs> so, because yeah. you're sort of saying, okay, you're gonna go modern in technology and you're gonna go really modern in look. And I'm seeing like the, the one of the versions of the cafe range is kind of white with these brass handles. It looks kind of like yeah. fun retro. They are impossible to get right now. Don't even get me started on the availability of those things. So I'm not selling them right now, but it's a really beautiful look because it's kind of old fashioned with the new technology. So there's something in the human brain that is sort of wanting something a little bit more retro. Yeah, there's and I think another brand that I've seen called Ilve Mm -hmm. And Ilve is gorgeous um, and they have these beautiful induction ranges, but I don't, I've never used them. I can't find enough information on them. So if anybody has an Ilve induction range, I need to talk to you because they have a gorgeous old school look, um, but I just don't, I, I haven't used them. So I don't know. Well, this has uh, been fantastic. We've blown through our time like any amazing webinar. And so uh, thank you to, to Chef Rochelle so much for, for being with us. Rochelle, how's, how's your lunch looking? Is it uh, almost ready? Well, to... I, my pizza's in, the, in the, 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 the steam oven that's now being an oven. Uh, we got some salmon here. We've got our little peppers. So it's some pretty beautiful. I, I, I'm, very, I'm very excited about all this. And I just thank all of you for your time. There's a lot of webinars and things out there. I know these guys are top notch, but just thank you. And just let us know how we can help. It's uh, really important. And, you know, we, I can't, I, we didn't talk really enough about the fires and the redwood trees, 3000 year old redwood trees being threatened um, and the floods and things like that. But if that's not enough of a reason, great cooking and healthy homes and a beautiful sleek design, hopefully that's a reason unto itself. Love that. Well, thank you so much, Rochelle. And thank you, Robert. I know in the background there, you've been really helping out. Um, uh, it's so fun to have you on. Um, we're going to have to do this again because it's always so fun and such a hit. And, and it's also just cool because there's so many new options, you know, like Next year, if we get together again, I'm sure there'll be new things to talk about. Absolutely. Um, but to all of you who are tuning in, thank you. Thank you again to Rochelle thank and Robert. Um, if any of you have questions about 
electrifying your homes, please check out electrifynow.net. We've got tips for you. We've got even discounts on some products. Nice. If you have questions and you're stumped, uh, send us an email. We're happy to help out. If we can't answer it, we, we will find someone who can. So thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in and uh, good luck with all your electrification projects. Yeah, thanks thank so much, you everybody. All. Did, see, Rob, he came to oh, I think Robert's hungry. Okay. <laughs> Robert's ready to eat. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Right, thanks, all. Good See time, you. Thank you very much.